The sign into town reads, Russian soldier, you will die here. The Russians didn't listen. This is the story of how the small city of Voznesensk fought off the Russian invasion in early March. Yevgen Velichko is the mayor of this city of 30,000 people. He took us to the bridge, at least where the bridge used to be, where Ukrainian soldiers, volunteer fighters, and a fearlessly creative cast of civilians stared down the Russians. How close did the Russians get to taking over this city? You can see over here on the other side of, of the bridge, in the distance there, just on the other side of the bridge, a row of tires, and that's as close as the Russian tanks came. The mayor says the Ukrainians blew it up so that the Russians couldn't cross into the heart of the city. That sparked a two-day confrontation. But thousands of residents were trapped on the other side of the bridge, the only section of the city Russian forces invaded. This man named Ivan lives in a house along the main road into town. Several homes and cars around him were scorched in the firefight. He hid inside with his elderly mother as the Russian tanks swarmed his neighborhood. He describes how terrifying it was, several homes blown up around him, constant barrage of gunfire. But he tells us he actually didn't see it, he had to hide inside his home. But just the sound of it was terrifying. Various cameras captured the images of the Russian military vehicles with the letter Z emblazoned on the side. The mayor says three columns of Russian soldiers moved into the city. One military official says the Russians invaded with at least 100 tanks and armored personnel carriers and as many as 500 soldiers. So this is Ghost. He's asked that we not use his full name and he is the head of a reconnaissance unit here in this town that was instrumental in fighting back the, the Russians. Um, and this was the spot, this was the spot where you fought the Russians. He says he thinks that's a blood stain there. Wow. The remnants of a, of a Russian meal. When they were advancing towards the bridge, thanks to the Ukrainian military forces, the Air Assault Brigade, the Territorial Defense and our Recon Squad, we fought them off. Here we showered them with artillery and we destroyed them. The Ukrainians blew up multiple bridges in the city to keep the Russians from moving into this town that sits at a strategic crossroads in southern Ukraine and kept Vladimir Putin's army from invading deeper into the country. In this spot, just on the edge of the city, multiple Russian tanks were taken out here. We're actually standing uh, in the ashes of one of those tanks and there were at least two Russian soldiers that were killed in this very spot. <laughs> We are strong. Our city is strong. Our spirit is strong. When the enemy came, everyone rose up, from kids to the elderly. Hiding residents called in the locations of Russian soldiers. Others ran ammunition and supplies wherever it was needed. The Russians had more firepower, had more weapons than you guys had. They were powerful. They had tanks, they had APCs, a lot of wheeled vehicles. But we stronger, smarter and more tactical. Are you worried that they're going to come back for revenge after you guys embarrass them? No, it's them who should be afraid. They should know if they come here, they will remain here as cargo to hundred. We already have refrigerators for their bodies and we can bring more. But the Russian soldiers weren't ready to face the grandmothers of Stepova Street. In a small village on the edge of Vozniensensk, 88-year-old Vera walked out, armed with her canes, and fired off an epic tirade of verbal artillery. They say they were chased out of their homes and robbed, but the women relish telling this story with laughter. I ask if they're worried the Russians will return to seek revenge. They tell me 
they're not going anywhere. 